this May, it's been two years since I went down to my local ward and asked for a Book of Mormon. Now, make no mistake, I was a hardcore atheist, and it was purely for academic purposes as I'm a religious studies student. But that's what makes it so fascinating to look back at how far I've come these past two years. Which got me thinking, how amazing would it be to be able to send a letter back in time to myself, to two years ago atheist me? So that's what I wrote. I wrote a letter to past me. And that's what I'd like to share with you all today. Dear Past Darcy, One day very soon, you'll wake up one morning and think it's just some normal day. But you're going to be given a Book of Mormon. And that book is about to change your life. Because on your third reading of the Book of Mormon, you're going to read 2 Nephi 2, which tells of Adam and Eve. And literally, the last thing you'll ever expect is going to happen. You're going to believe it. Almost like you're remembering it. And then you're going to remember what it says at the end of the Book of Mormon, Moroni's promise, about how if you sincerely pray and ask God, he will manifest the truth unto you. And you're going to do something that you never thought you would, that you make fun of people for doing. You're going to pray to God. And you're going to get your answer. God will reply. And it will be the greatest fusion of love and peace and joy that you've ever felt. And it will be the stopping and restarting of your entire being. But the Holy Ghost can testify to you all the truth he wants to. But ultimately, you'll only hear it when you're ready to hear it. And what just happened to you? What you'll spend 18 months denying happened to you? It's going to scare you. You love always being right and having the answer, and you're stubborn. So you're going to dedicate the next 18 months of your life. Every book you read, every YouTube video you watch, every daydream in your bedroom, to defending your original hypotheses. That is, that there is no God and the church isn't true. You're going to have discussions with family members and friends about how the church isn't true. You're going to know every single anti-Mormon argument there is and share it with as many people as possible. You're even going to run a pretty popular atheist blog online where you write posts about the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith and how he'd clearly made it all up. But through all of that, behind all those high walls you built up against God, you'll be bearing inside you what you know is the undeniable truth. I'm the future you, so I know your secret. You're not really an atheist. Okay, well, in your mind you are, but deep down in your soul, you know you're not alone. You know that there's a God. And deep down, you want to let yourself believe in the restored gospel. You're not just going to be the lost sheep. You're going to be the wolf. But Christ's going to leave the 99 for you anyway. Here's the thing you need to know about Jesus. He's faithful. And he never gives up. Ever. Even when you hate him, um, roll your eyes at him, or call, your, or call his restored gospel stupid, or made up, or crazy, even then, especially then, he never gives up on you. <laughs> and then, one random day, you'll read Alma 32 in the Book of Mormon, which talks about planting a seed of faith. Um, for the first time, you won't try to dig your seed of faith up with hate and lies, but you'll nourish it. And that's how it happens. <laughs> There's no pillar of light or vision on the road to Damascus. There's just the unrelenting love of Jesus Christ. You'll spend 18 months running as fast as you can away from God and finally just be too tired to keep building up the lies he's tearing down. You'll just stop, turn and face Christ and go, oh, there you are. I've been looking for you my whole life. So you'll get baptized. And after you come out of that baptismal water, your arms will still be the same, your legs will still be the same, all the atoms in your body will still be exactly the same. 
but they won't. They'll have been drenched in the blood of Jesus Christ. And they'll be braver, stronger because of it. You'll be stronger. You'll finally be the person you were saved to be. And that first breath you take after coming up, it'll feel like the first breath you've taken without being suffocated. So, past Darcy, this is going to be your testimony. I'm sure it's complex and confusing, but it's what got you here. It's going to be a long and difficult road, but I'm glad it's long. If it wasn't, the message might not have been so clear to me. And that is that I need to protect my seed of faith with everything I have. Because if you think your life is good now, you have no idea just how incredible it's about to become. All the blessings that are heading your way. And all of that's just 18 months and one baptism away. You're going to go searching for one answer and discover another. In your atheist quest to, dis to disprove Mormonism, you're going to find out that it's true. So right now, past, Dar past Darcy, you're just about to begin your research project, but spoiler, here's the conclusion. I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is Christ's restored church, and I do not say that lightly. And I promise you that by believing in and following the restored gospel, you will find a peace and love and joy inco incomparable to anything else the world has ever known. And I say these things with all my heart and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.